welcome in a material and engineering metallurgy subject today we will discuss about the topic cold working process so when the metal is to be used for wires bands bars or other types of road structures it is first cast into ignots that are then subjected to the rolling webbing or wire drawing operations that produce the surf mechanical deformation of the metal such operations are described as hot or cold working of the metal depending on the temperature at which operation is performed so when a metal or material is created below its recrystallization temperature the process of the working of the metal is called as a cold working process so here the metal will get so uh, plastically deformed by using a certain application of the pressure or the force which will be the rolling process swagging process wire drawing process etc so that is called as a cold working treatment or cold working operation so when this metal is a uh, subjected to cold working operation such as a drawing into a wire the grains are broken down enlarged in each other and the enlarged elongated to develop the fiber structures or appearance that is the characteristics of root forms so that is called as a cold working process next is a low power light microscope view of rot wire microstructure so this is the microstructure in this diagram you can clearly visible the microstructure of the cold work component the grains visible have been broken apart and tangled among one each other the it entangled grains are lined up along the axis of the wire so this type of microstructure is called as fibrous structure for obvious reasons next is a annealing heat treatment process so it is the controlled heating and cooling process designated to produce desired properties in the metal the annealing process usually is initiated to soften metals to increase their plastic deformation potential to stabilize shape and to increase the machinability so annealing it is the heat treatment process for the improvement of the uh, properties of the material so in annealing what happen the metal is uh, heated above its austenizing temperature with the help of furnace either a cupola furnace or electric furnace then holding at that temperature for a particular period of the time then cooling that metal by switch wiping the furnace and in furnace itself so this process is called as a annealing heat treatment process so there will be the refinement of the grains removal of the stress free or uh, removal of the stress grains with the stress free grains a recrystallization process is also carried out in the annealing that is nothing but it is the process of forming new stress free crystals or grains in the work hardened metal through a controlled heat treatment process so here 
you can see the diagrammatic representation of the recrystallization and overall annealing heat treatment so on x axis there will be the time of annealing on y axis you will see on the right hand side ductility and on the left hand side there will be the tensile strength then the various stages for the cold working then recovery then recrystallization and grain growth so two curves are there so due to cold working tensile strength is increases in first curve then in recovery tensile strength reduces in recrystallization tensile strength again decreases and in grain growth also tensile strength decreases here in this cold working region the tensile strength decreases uh, in recovery uh, ductility is constant in recrystallization it will be increases tensile strength and here in grain growth also increases so due to the time of annealing in various stages the tensile strength ductility and grain growth if it will be occur so uh, the fibrous microstructure is present and arrows indicates residual stresses so this is the residual stress so in a diagram you can clearly see the uh, there is a residual stresses are induced in the material so here arrow shows the on the outer side the tensile residual stresses uh, the tensile stresses are induced and at the inner side that is the core region mm. the compressive stresses are induced so for p b diagram minimum heat leaves the fiber structure in intact but relieves the stresses however the lattice remains distorted so here structure remains same but the stresses are induced in second case then in third annealing with more heat allows the lattice deformation to be relieved the fibers microstructure remains as it is so here the, there is a definite arrangement of the atoms occurs that is a gain refinement will be there using the annealing heat treatment process then d and e further heating causes the loss of fibrous structure and growth of the grains which increases the size with increasing the application of the heat so here in this uh, uh, diagram d and e further grain growth occurs and a definite uh, grain structure will gets form for the metal so this is the stages of the annealing so initially there will be the stress after that stress are removed then uh, arrangement of the grains and final position of the grains next is the applications of the uh, products form after the annealing process then ortho donatic wires are the applications of the components from after the annealing then claps for removable partial den dentures root canal files and remers then crowns in pediatric dentity and surgical instruments are also formed by using the annealing heat treatment now we will see one uh, video of annealing heat treatment process working with lower gauge metals can sometimes be difficult when forming bending and shaping when creating jewelry thick metals can take a lot of time and effort to get everything just right 
In this tool demo, learn how to anneal your metals to make working with thick metal easy. This metal rod is great for making bracelets and rings, but forming it can be a little difficult. Rings and bracelets need to be tightly formed and hammering them on a mandrel takes a little time and additional effort. In fact, some of these lower gauges that Cool Tools offers are rather difficult to bend. Annealing is a great way to make this easy. To anneal, you'll need a torch and a firing station. We're going to heat our metal up until it glows. I'm working on a piece of fiber board and I had my rod sitting on two trivets. The trivets work great because the rod is heavy, but a couple of third hands work just as nice. Begin to heat up your metal with your torch. You'll want to move slowly across your metal because you need to evenly heat the whole piece. The larger the piece you work with, the longer it will take. We need to heat the whole rod up until there is a dull red glow. Annealing is a heat treatment that alters the material to increase its ductility and to make it more workable. During the process, you heat the material to above its critical temperature and then cool it. Annealing can induce ductility, soften metal, relieve internal stresses, and improve cold working properties. This is a valuable technique because making jewelry requires small, precise bends. When your piece is ready, you'll have a dull red glow that is consistent across the entire piece. When you're there, turn your torch off and let your piece cool. After letting it cool for a few minutes, it's ready to work with. Before, I could hardly bend this copper rod, but after annealing, it bends rather easily. Now, I can comfortably design and create. Using the annealing technique, you can work with a variety of thick metals comfortably and easily and create beautiful, one-of-a-kind jewelry. Visit our learning center at www.cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow